Right, now we're at the end of this playlist now for integration. So we've got the integral of sine of kx and the integral of cosine of kx. Now, if I started with sine and I go ahead and differentiate sine, I'm going to get cos out. Differentiate cos, I get minus sine x. Differentiate minus sine, I get minus cos x. Differentiate minus cos, oh, I get back to sine. And that's your cycle. Then you get cos x, minus sine x, etc. So when I go down, I differentiate, but when I go up, I'm actually integrating. So I'm doing the reverse, because the other reverse of differentiation is integration. So if I wanted to integrate these two then, well these are how I integrated e to the k x in a previous video, well, isn't it just one over it again? And it is, it's really sneaky. But if I wanted to differentiate things like y equals sine of kx, and I wanted to differentiate that, I can do it using the chain rule. So y prime derivative is just k cosine of kx. So the integral of that is one over that, i.e. it's one over k. So if I wanted to integrate sine, for example, now sine integrates to minus cos going up in this cycle, so I get minus one over k cosine of kx, plus the constancy of integration. Now with cos, if I integrate cos, I get back sine, which is nice because I don't need a minus on the front. I think that's quite nice to work with when you get one of those. And that is where sine comes from. So Let's think about it, if I was going to integrate cosine of 2x. Well, cosine 2x will integrate to 1 over 2 sine 2x. Alright, now cosine 2x you might want to replace with cosine squared minus sine squared. Well, if you wanted to integrate things like sine squared, you'd have to use the double angle formula, and then you'd have to use these little formulae to integrate cosine 2x from your double angle formula. So this is where all that trigger modeling stuff that you've done in chapter 8 of pure year 2 can be quite helpful when you're looking at intervals like this.